It's spring in the beautiful and historic city of Edinburgh, Scotland. The sun is out and the trees are in bloom. It's one of those perfect days. But things are not nearly as perfect as they seem. There's something in the air, nanoparticles. We've grown somewhat accustomed to the bad air in our cities, but scientists now know that the air contains nanoparticles, and they're dangerous. On his daily commute to the Royal Infirmary, Dr. David Newby, a cardiac surgeon, tries to avoid streets with congested traffic. We see a lot of patients come into our coronary care unit with acute heart attacks, severe heart attacks, life-threatening heart attacks. And actually, if you look at what they're doing in the hours before they come in to have their heart attack, they're two to three times more likely to be in traffic. Case in point, just a few hours ago, this patient was rushed to the hospital suffering from a heart attack. What's she doing when, when she got um, a chest pain? That's a good question, actually. They were basically driving home and um, caught in traffic, and uh, yeah, she suddenly started getting some chest pain. Yeah. Dr. Yubi's research is now linking heart attacks with heavy traffic. And it's not the frustration of sitting in traffic that's to blame. It's the clouds of nanoparticles suspended within diesel exhaust. What we now understand is that the very small particles that are in the diesel exhaust of traffic, these nanoparticles, we call them combustion-derived nanoparticles because it's when the engine burns them. So when people breathe in these combustion-derived nanoparticles in the air, they can influence the lung, cause inflammation in the lung, and that then causes a cascade of effects that can affect the heart and trigger the heart attack. We also believe that these nanoparticles are so small that they can actually fly across the blood vessel wall because in the lungs, the blood vessel wall is incredibly thin. So we think these nanoparticles, when they're in the bloodstream, can actually trigger these plaques, this fatty deposit in the artery, to burst open, and that can cause a heart attack to occur. To strengthen this theory of his, Dr. Newby has designed a simple field experiment. Morning, Roger. Hey. Hi, my name's Dr. Barnes. I'm one of the researchers involved in the study. Just before we take you out on the walk, we need to put an ECG machine onto you and uh, a blood pressure cuff just to measure your blood pressure. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, a bit Frankenstein like with all these. Sure, okay. you're not the first to say that. With the heart monitor and blood pressure cuffs in place, the nano detectives hit the streets to track the invisible plumes of nanoparticles and monitor how the test subject reacts as they enter his body. And so I think when this bus goes past, it'll be interesting to see what count we get up to. We're about 30,000 at the moment. Yeah, and you can oh, see wow, it's jumped yeah. up quite a bit there. Yeah, so wow. it jumped up to about 48,000. Are you feeling OK, monitor? Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Now, if you're sitting in traffic and you think you're safe from the exhaust-borne nanoparticles because your windows are sealed up tight, guess again. Actually, inside a car, the pollution levels are much, much higher than outside the car. They're about four or five times higher inside a car. So there are four or five times as nanoparticulates circulating. So if the air in our congested cities is so bad for us, what can we do to get rid of these dangerous nanoparticles? The answer may be found here, a few hundred kilometers away, in Oxford, England. That's the famous Radcliffe Observatory over there. Peeble College, we're going past now. Somerville College, where Margaret Thatcher was. One of our favorite pubs. It's a nice tour, isn't it? <laughs> it's a great tour. <laughs> Peter Dobson, a professor here at Oxford University, is not only a terrific tour guide, he's also one of the top nanoscientists in the world. And he plans to fight those deadly exhaust-borne nanoparticles with, well, some nanoparticles of his own. It's shaping up to be a nano-a-nano -nano battle. And thanks to today's imaging technology, Professor Dobson has a ringside seat. 
the thinking about nanotechnology for me, and I guess many of my colleagues, is a 24-hour-a-day exercise. We can never get it out of our minds. We're thinking all the time about potential applications of the material we're working with, or if we're seeing problems, we're asking how can nanotechnology solve those problems? What new property can we uh, endow in a particle which will solve the problem we're seeing? Professor Dobson believes the road to cleaning nanoparticles out of the air in the world's major cities begins right here at the bus depot in the outskirts of Oxford. The fuel on this bus has got cerium oxide particles suspended in the diesel fuel. And the idea started because of a chance meeting in a pub between uh, someone who had this vision of using cerium oxide to improve uh, diesel engines and a former student of mine. And between them, they found a way to make cerium oxide nanoparticles that could be added to diesel fuel and eliminate the harmful nanoparticles in the exhaust. Clean emission, no soot coming out of the tailpipe, and uh, uh, we see this as a, a radical way of improving all internal combustion engines and possibly other combustion as well. This drum, containing hundreds of trillions of cerium oxide nanoparticles, is connected directly to the diesel refueling tanks. Inside the engine cylinders, cerium oxide works as a potent catalyst, giving up oxygen that allows the fuel to burn more efficiently. If you envisage breaking the cerium oxide down from big lumps, down into lots of tiny little nanoparticles, you end up with a very high surface area. And it's that surface area which drives the catalysis and makes it so effective as a diesel fuel additive. This is a good example of how a nanomaterial can help clean up the planet. But for the environment as a whole, what is the likely impact of nanotechnologies? We're learning more about the environment that exists, but we're also beginning to understand how we can adapt nanotechnology to clean up some of the pretty dreadful contaminants we've introduced there already. I'm one of the optimists. I think that nanotechnology is going to play a much bigger role in improving the environment than damaging it.